Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast, where we talk about how to create a life you won't need an escape from. I'm Coach Simone, author of the book 100 Ways to Simplify Your Life, and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Now, before we discuss the ostrich effect and some helpful examples when it comes to this cognitive distortion, I want to remind you that this is episode 14 of my series on cognitive biases, and there will be one more to come in the upcoming months, so stay tuned for that. If you haven't listened to the previous episodes, I will leave links to them in the description box below. I also created a YouTube playlist so you can listen to all the episodes on cognitive biases by visiting youtube.com slash Now, before we explore the ostrich effect in depth, let's clarify what a cognitive bias actually means. A cognitive bias is a systematic error in thinking that affects the decisions and judgments that you make. Another popular term that has the exact same meaning as cognitive biases is cognitive distortion. Now, as we mentioned, Cognitive bias we're going to explore in depth today is called the ostrich effect. What does this cognitive distortion actually mean? The ostrich effect refers to the tendency to avoid dangerous or negative information by choosing to ignore it. This concept was coined by researchers Gallery and Said, who used that term to describe people who avoid knowing the risk of certain financial decisions or situations. The name comes from the common legend that ostriches bury their heads in the sand to avoid danger. For example, people may avoid looking at their bills or bank statements or refuse to admit they have a financial problem because the truth is too painful to face. Another example of the ostrich effect is not seeking out feedback at your job because you're avoidant when it comes to hearing the truth about your performance. The ostrich effect is at play here. When you're making a decision, you're not viewing the situation objectively. As with any other cognitive bias, the ostrich effect can be difficult to detect. So we need to be aware of its manifestations to be able to spot our error in thinking and choose a better, more constructive view of the situation. The question is, do we all struggle with the ostrich effect or is that something that only happens to a handful of us? The short answer is probably yes. While we can't confirm that that is the case for every single person on planet Earth, it's definitely something that is quite common for us humans. We all have cognitive biases and blind spots, so although we may not struggle with the ostrich effect per se, we'll definitely have problems with other cognitive biases. I've actually made a free downloadable cheat sheet with the top 15 cognitive biases that might be holding you back. So if you want to download it, just click the link in the description box below or head over to bit.ly slash 15 biases. Now let's go back to the ostrich effect. Here are a few examples to illustrate this bias. The ostrich effect can be also spotted when someone ignores something big, scary or urgent to not have to deal with the potential consequences. For example, burying your head in the sand when it comes to climate change and ignoring how bad things are going to get. One more example of the ostrich effect is ignoring someone who gives you negative feedback or bad news because they contradict your beliefs. So instead of taking them with a grain of salt, you decide to completely ignore them. Dealing with the ostrich effect doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with you. This is a cognitive bias, which means it's going to happen whether or not you want it to happen. So how can you change that? One thing you can do to become more aware of the ostrich effect is to realize why it happens in the first place. As humans, we try to ignore bad news. But the thing is that no matter how much we do, we won't make them go away. The ostrich effect happens because we're trying to protect ourselves from having to face reality and we're trying to postpone having to deal with it. The more objective you are about your own cognitive biases, the easier it will be to spot the ostrich effect next time you feel like burying your head in the sand. As you can see, before we come to any conclusions, it will be beneficial to step back and view the situation objectively. So how can we do that? What can help a lot when it comes to spotting the ostrich effect is to ask yourself the following questions. 1. Is this a fact? 2. What evidence can I collect to support this statement? 3. Am I being rational here or is this a cognitive bias? 4. If this is a cognitive bias, which one is it? These questions will make even more sense as we conclude the cognitive biases series. If you're curious to see what else we're going to cover next, make sure to download your free cheat sheet by visiting bit.ly slash 15 biases. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.